Hi everyone, I'm Dana and welcome back to Inverter Always. You guys, this is episode 15. This is by far the longest series I've ever done and as excited as I am to complete the series, I'm sad. This has been a really big project. This has been something I've been working on for a while. Uh, notes galore, just trying to get everything built for you guys. So I hope tuning in, you guys have seen the other videos of this series. I hope you guys have enjoyed this series. Today is kind of a bonus video. The system's up and running. You've done the field settings. You've done the test. You've kind of done everything at this point. So what are we going to be talking about in today's video? Well, a while back, we talked about, I think it was in the piping and wiring videos, two videos. I'll put the card for one of them up in the corner now, and I'll put the other card up here shortly. We talked about when you're purging with nitrogen. If the electrician, because either A, they didn't know, or B, they didn't care, lands power on an indoor unit during the installation process, that valve, that electronic expansion valve that is built into the indoor unit, each indoor unit has one of these and it's cracked open from the factory so you can purge nitrogen while you're brazing, do your pressure test, do your evacuation, etc., etc. Well, guess what? That valve closes if the electrician lands power to the indoor unit. The first time power is applied to an indoor unit or any piece of equipment for that matter, those open valves close. So in today's video, I'm going to walk you through how to go through and open all of those valves so that you can then properly purge with nitrogen, finish your refrigerant piping and brazing and uh, pressure testing and evacuation and refrigerant charging and all that other stuff. And it's called refrigerant recovery mode. And at the end of the video, stay tuned. I'm going to give you guys just a quick little teaser about what you should be doing at the very, very, very end of a project. It's going to utilize a tool called DeChecker. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please click the like button below. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. All right, you guys, let's jump right in. Now, as I've mentioned many times in this series, this is not a technical training. This is not a factory authorized class in any way, shape or form. I just wanted to bring you guys this series because there's a lot of information in the installation manual that is hard to read, hard to understand. It's hard to translate and you guys have questions. And so when you guys are on the job site and you're having a hard time getting a hold of me or you're having a hard time getting a hold of somebody else, whoever supports you on your jobs regularly, I wanted to give you guys a, a reference, a, a somewhere to go to get a quick answer. So these videos here are really just to help you guys. I take the information from my experience. I take the tidbits out of the installation and operation manuals, as well as conversations and discussions from past classes with contractors so that your guys' jobs can go go as smooth as possible and you guys aren't frustrated or stressing out while you're on the job site. All right, so refrigerant recovery and evacuation mode. A lot of folks will confuse this with pump down. We are not doing a pump down. VRV products don't really have a pump down mode. Can you try to pump them down should you need to? Yeah, there's a way to do that, but this is not the way to do that. Refrigerant recovery and evacuation mode, the whole point of this field setting in the outdoor unit is to open all the valves in the system and force shut down the outdoor unit from operating. So you can actually use this for a lot of different reasons. One of the most common reasons we use this though is during the installation should an electrician land power, line voltage power to a piece of equipment before we're done with the refrigeration process. Now, we talked a little bit about this in the piping video that I did. So I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll put a card for that video up in the corner now. The process of doing the install, Normally, you guys mount the units and you run your copper. It's usually the first thing you guys do. Well, guess what? If an electronic expansion valve closes, you're going to be prevented from purging nitrogen through that unit. 
And if you're not purging nitrogen, as we've discussed before, you're going to have oxidation inside your lines, which means that oxidation then is going to get plugged in a strainer or a filter, or it's going to seat on the valve stem of that EEV at some point, and then it's going to be a stuck EEV. It won't open and close properly, and then you end up killing compressors. So purging is critical on inverter systems. You have to do it. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So to ensure that you are purging with nitrogen properly, you got to make sure that no power has been applied to any of the product. If that happens, then you kind of have to push pause. You're going to do your install a little bit backwards. It's not the end of the world. It just takes a little bit of communication, a little bit of logistics, and it is possible. So what you're going to do is power all of your equipment and run all of your comm wire and leave the piping alone for the time being. The goal is we want the outdoor unit to get up and operational from a communication perspective. You're not gonna operate the equipment. Remember, if you watched the past videos in the series, you physically can't operate the system until you do the test. So we don't have to worry about the compressor turning on. It's not gonna turn on from the thermostats. So you're totally fine doing the comm wire first and getting the system communicating so that we can open up all the valves. So what you need to do is you need to make sure to verify communication between the indoors and outdoors. I'll go ahead and I'll put a card in the corner for that video now where we went through as a, as a group in this video and talked about how to verify your communication is good. Yes, okay, great. Our communication is good. We see all six indoor units that we've physically installed. So what you're going to do from the outdoor board is you're going to turn on refrigerant recovery and evacuation mode. And here's how you're going to do it on the Daikin Veer VS. Always start from a main screen. We know it's the main screen because it has H3P solid and there's no other lights on. With H3P solid and the only light on, you're going to press and hold the mode button until H1P is solid. H1P solid tells you, hey, you're in service mode. You are in the correct menu that allows you to get to the next setting that we're going to go to, refrigerant recovery and evacuation mode. With H1P solid, you're going to carefully press the set button 21 times. So you're going to go through, you know, boom, 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 okay? You'll know that you've hit it 21 times because H1P will be on, H3P will be on, H3P has a value of 16, H5P will be on, which has a value of 4, 16 plus 4 equals 20, and H7P will be on, which has a value of 1, so 20 plus 1 is 21. So 1, 3, 5, and 7 should all be on. That way you know, yes, I've pressed it 21 times. Now press the return button one time and H7P will be blinking. H7P has a value of one. Option one, if you were to look at this in paper format, is off, disabled. Refrigerant recovery mode is off. We need to turn it on, which is option two. So you hit the set button one time to move the blinking seven over to a blinking six. And before you ask, yes, H1P is still solid. We don't care about H1P, and you're probably saying this to yourself right now if you've been following the entire series and paying attention. H1P is just to tell us what menu we're currently in. We're in the service menu. H1P is solid. So we moved H7P over to H6P, and H6P is blinking. We did that by pressing the set button one time. The set button is toggling through all the options. In this case, our options are either on or off, so six and seven will toggle back and forth if you keep hitting the set button. You wanna do it until the H6P light is blinking. Now you're gonna press the return button one time. H6P goes from blinking to solid, and then if you remember after saving it like we just did, you also have to activate it. So you hit return, one more time. When you hit return one more time, that activates the setting. So what you're going to do at this point is you're going to just stop. You're going to hear the valves open and the system is going to be locked out. So if you go to a nav controller, you'll actually see the nav controller is on, but it's off. It says off, even though it's turned on. The green light is on, but it says test at the bottom. And it's not actually running a test. It's just locked out. So the whole system's locked out and all the valves are open and now you can safely purge nitrogen through the system and do your pressure test and do your evacuation and not worry about not purging somewhere and getting that that gas trapped or anything like that. So this setting is extremely useful. You do need to look out for a couple of things though. 
once you turn on this setting, you don't want to kill power. If you kill power to any of the equipment, all of a sudden you have a communication error, which closes the valves. So don't kill power to anything. You also want to make sure that you don't press any buttons at the outdoor unit, because if you press any buttons, you might accidentally escape from refrigerant recovery and evacuation mode, which you don't want to do yet. So basically just don't touch anything. Do all of your refrigerant piping, do your pressure test, do your evacuation, add your field charge after the vacuum test is passed. And now that the refrigerant is added, you can go ahead and you can escape out of refrigerant recovery and evacuation mode. And so all you have to do is press the mode button one time to escape back to an H3P, and then you should be good to go. Once everything is done, you've done your field settings, you've done the entire install, everything's operational, you've ran it in heat, you've ran it in cooling and just felt the warm air or felt the cool air coming from the supply register or from the wall head supply air grill, whatever. Awesome, great. Technically you're done, but if you wanna be a rock star, you're really not done until you verify performance. The only way to verify that a system is actually operating correctly is to plug in a tool called the D checker. Or if you do have a Daikin service checker, which is typically what we use on commercial VRV, it will also work on VRV S systems or VRV life systems. So the D checker or the service checker, either one of those tools will be just fine, but you need to plug one of those tools in. You plug it in at the outdoor unit, and then you're going to take runtime. You're actually going to look at the discharge pipe thermistor. You're going to look at the heat exchanger thermistors. You're going to look at your indoor liquid and gas pipe thermistors. You're going to look at your air sensors. You're going to look at your pressure transducer values, your target condensing and evaporating temperatures compared to the actual condensing and evaporating temperatures. You're going to calculate superheat at each indoor unit in cooling mode, etc., etc. You're going to make sure that the system is doing what it's supposed to be doing. This is something you should be doing, not just on all of your VRVS installs, but you should be doing this on all of your mini splits too. Albeit your mini splits have significantly fewer sensors because again, it's an entry level inverter system, very little control but you should still be plugging in a D checker to your mini splits and verifying the performance by looking at the operational data. So I'm going to go ahead and put a card in the corner. Now I have a playlist where we actually go through and we look at some D checker operation data and we look at some service checker operation data. So you guys can get a feel for these tools. Now the D checker, I actually did a whole series on the D checker where I show you guys how to set it up, how to get the Bluetooth signal established. We looked at runtime. And so I highly encourage you guys to check out that series. And then maybe as just a bonus, you can look at our VRV commissioning video that we did here on a commercial building recently, where we looked at service checker data as well. You guys, it's extremely important. I can't stress enough verifying the system is operating properly because just because a unit blows warm air out of the supply grill doesn't mean it's operating properly. But you guys already know that. So if you've stuck around until the end, you guys, I appreciate all of you guys for staying with me here. If you have any questions of uh, this video, any questions on the whole series, you guys don't hesitate, put them in the comments below. I read all your comments and I always do my best to respond and give you guys the answers that you're asking uh, to the best of my ability. You guys, we are one big happy family. We're just trying to learn more about this technology, right? There's no bad questions. If you're thinking it, someone else is thinking it too. I guarantee it. So don't be shy. Ask your questions. Everyone else watching these videos is also here to help. So it's a good interaction opportunity for all of us all around the world to talk about this stuff. The HVAC, especially inverter, is a very niche market as is, especially on YouTube. You know, this is a good conversation opportunity for all of us, you guys. So I thank you all for watching. If you guys have not already considered subscribing, please subscribe. You watched 15 episodes, so you got to be interested. So we do talk about this kind of stuff all the time on this channel, you guys. I'm going to be gearing up and doing another similar series, but on the Hitachi VRF. I'm going to keep those videos coming, you guys. So thank you so much for watching Inverter Always. I hope you guys all have an awesome day.